What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. Uh, today we're going to talk about the number one pick held by the Edmonton Oilers and uh, what they should do with it. Obviously, the number one projected player is Nail Yakupov, the fail for Nail campaign that was held in many cities across North America. Um, I'm going to come right out and say people are talking about, oh, him, Hall, Nugent Hopkins, I believe Piavi. Ain't going to work. I'm telling you right now. Unless you move one of them, it's not going to work. You have too many cooks, not enough ovens. Yakupov's a great player, but so is everyone else. They need defense up in Edmonton. You can't have all these superstars playing, you know, fantasy hockey every night. It doesn't work like that. Without the quality puck movement defensemen, they'll get hemmed in their own zone on night in, night out basis, not being able to showcase their full offensive creativity due to the lack of quality defensemen. And then they're going to be getting lit up. The plus minus will be atrocious. The team will be getting scored on left and right. They'll put up five goals, the other team will put up six because there'll be no defensemen to hold the line. I'm sorry. It's just what it is. When you have all those great forwards, you need someone that can chip the puck out of the zone and make the goals they score stand. Just the way it goes. That's why I think they should move that pick. Uh, obviously, the best defenseman in the draft is Ryan Murray, who we've been hearing about for you know five, six years since he was you know, 14, like all these other super prospects. Super. I didn't say stupid. Super prospects. Um, and he's going to be a great player. But you can get more value if you trade down. I honestly think if you trade down, I got three possible options for them. Trade down to Columbus at the number two pick. Columbus is going to be moving Rick Nash. That's you know the worst kept secret in all hockey. Having said that, they can use a franchise right winger that is Nelly Agapov to help the rebuilding process to complement the players that will be brought in by the Rick Nash trade. They can offer the second pick, a first round pick next year, and John Moore, one of their top young defensemen. Uh, Moore isn't a, exactly a superstar, but you can pair him with Murray, and you're going to have a pretty decent. You know, defense parent for years to come, and uh, Moore's pretty good at moving the puck. You know, Mario will be pretty good too. Uh, Lace Hobbs, I'm picking third. Uh, the Canadians obviously are in a position they're not too used to, but uh, I think they can offer the uh, Jackets. I keep, I mean, excuse me, the Oilers. They get the number one pick so often you forget about it. Uh, Nathan Bolio, that top prospect playing for in the Memorial Cup right now for the St. John Sea Dogs. I'm, or Jared Tenorti, another guy, one of their other top prospect defensemen. I'd take Bolio. Great combination of skating, size, and offensive um, you know, statistics. And the ability to play defense. Uh, Tenorti's great defensively, but lacks anything beyond that. He's you know, like 6'6", six, six, and that's it. And the third pick. So you can still draft Murray or you know, True, but one of those guys. There'll be plenty of defensemen in this draft. I can't remember who the next defenseman is behind... Uh, I got my cheat sheet somewhere, I don't care. But, uh, you know, this is a heavy draft for defensemen. You know, if you want a defenseman, this is a draft to pick one of the top ten. So you got to have that player you draft there and, you know, Bolio going forward to complement your for your young forward crew. And then finally, the Leafs. Uh, Brian Burke loves, loves, loves making bo big, bold moves of the draft. Obviously, Gwyneth Chris Pronger uh, trading up to get the Sedins when he's with Vancouver. Um, you know, stuff like that. And he can offer, Luke, look, Luke Shen's on his way out of Toronto. You know, who are we kidding now? You know, Burr can say what he wants, but <clears throat> Shen ain't getting it done up there. Shen and their pick, which I believe is a fifth-round pick, and Stuart Perty for uh, the number one pick, which, you know, send Yakupov to the most cocky, craze market in the world. Uh, you know, is that overpaying? Maybe, but Burke loves doing that. You know, he overpaid for Castle, obviously, and the Bruins fans say thank you very much, Berkey. But, uh, you know, he's... He likes making those big, bold moves. That's his trademark thing as a GM. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of other great young defensemen in this draft. You know, uh, Slater Koku, I mean, was it Gordon Koku? Uh, uh, yeah, Slater Koku, that's right. Uh, Griffin Reinhardt and all those guys that are will be quality players for years to come. You know, if you want a defenseman like Edmonton needs, there'll be plenty there. And they'll get a Stuart Percy, who was a first-round pick last year, and Luke Shen, who's already played, you know, f what, three or four years in the NHL already, so... You know, you're going to have a pretty stacked blue line to complement those skilled forwards going forward. And uh, I think that's what you got to do. You need quality defensemen to succeed in the National Hockey League. You, you know, the Bruins had Chara. Uh, you know, the Rangers got McDonough, Del Zotto. You know, the Kings got Drew Doughty. And Slava Volinov's playing really well. Uh, you know, even going a step further. You know, Chicago had Duncan Keith, Seabrook. Even Campbell wasn't horrible. Uh, Pittsburgh had gone shot even like Hal Gill to call, you know to, to keep up, uh, you know, scoring chances too minimal. You know, Detroit obviously Nick Lindstrom, you know, Anaheim, Scott Niedermeyer, Chris Pronga, you know, you think about all those great defensemen, you need great defensemen to win the Stanley Cup. And uh if Edmonton wants to be a cup contender down the line, they're gonna need great defensemen. You know, having great forwards that can score are great, but if no one can get them the puck out of the zone or, you know, keep the the goals off the board, you're screwed. 
But that's all I got on what the Edmonton Oilers should do with the number one pick in the 2012 NHL Entry Draft. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the playoffs and beyond. Later, guys.